Hello and welcome back to part 6 of SAS and Compass for web designers. So now the final thing we need to do is we need to style our footer. And we're going to do that right now. We have already created a file for our footer. So I'm just going to open up the footer.scss file and start typing away. Now we have two main elements inside of our footer. We have the aside and we have the footer element. So first we are going to style the aside, but before we do, I know for a fact that we have left something in our home.scss file. And see here below the pitch, we have already applied some styling to our aside. So I'm just going to take that out of there and paste it in place of this. We have already talked about this before, and now I'm going to paste in some colors and margins. So again, I'm going to margin from the top with the vertical space variable. We have a top border with this color solid five pixels, and we have a background color set as well. Now, if I save the file and reload that in Chrome, then here you can see that this is the border and this is the background color that I have set. But in our final result, we have also this pattern over here, and we're going to achieve that by using CSS pseudo elements. And we do that by saying ampersand before. First, we need to set the content. And we can just leave it empty. And it's going to extend class pattern. We have to display it as a block. And we're going to set the height to be equal to the variable of padding. And now if I save that and reload that in Chrome, you can see that the pattern has appeared, but it is in the wrong place. And that's because this element has a height set of padding and the aside has a padding of vertical space and the border on the top is five pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say margin top and I'm going to set it to negative padding plus vertical space plus five pixels. And that should do the trick. And now when we look at it in Chrome, you can see that it's exactly aligned as we want it to be. Next thing I want to do is alter the sections a bit because I want to add in a padding there. So I'm just going to apply padding here. And we know already what this does in blank work and that you have the alternatives of box sizing. And now I'm going to say padding right is going to be padding. Save that reload that in Chrome. And now you can see that there's just a little more space in here. And now we have two classes in here, which are about and contact. But if we open up the HTML file, you can see on the bottom that we also have a photo stream section. And we also have a section for our tweets. So let's style our tweets. So I'm just going to say class tweet. And each tweet is a span element. So I'm going to display it as a block and set the font size to be 12 pixels and then we need to style all of the span elements that are inside of our tweets and we're just going to reduce the font size to 11 pixels and set a lighter color. We also need to display them as a block and then finally set some margin 0 0 padding. So now each of these spans are going to push down 10 pixels. Save that and reload in Chrome. And here you can see that we have a nice little Twitter feed going on in here. And there are two more things that we have to do. So right now let's style this get social. So I'm going to use another SAS loop. And this time it's going to be something like a collection or an array. And what you can do is set a social variable and add in keywords, Facebook, Twitter, Dribble, and Skype. And now if we open up the HTML file, then right here you can see we have our class of Facebook, Twitter, Dribble, and Skype exactly in that order as well. So now what I can do is I can write an for each loop. And I'm going to say at each and each network. And this is just a variable that I can assign. I'm just assigning net as my working variable. So net stands for network and each network in my social list. For each network, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to set a class, and we talked about interpolation before. 
class of my network. So a class, for example, Facebook is going to have a float to the left. It's going to have a line height of 34 pixels and it's going to margin to the bottom of 12 pixels. And now we also want to set another pseudo element, which is going to be our image. So ampersand colon before content set to empty and we're going to set a width of 32 pixels and a height of 34 pixels. We're also going to float this to the left. We're also going to display it as a block and we're going to margin to the right of padding, which is going to be 10 pixels. And finally, we are going to include the image, which is at include sprite. And we are going to ask for a sprite called S and now interpolation again, variable of net, add a semicolon. And now if I save the file, I'm going to get an error that says that the CSS was invalid and it expected a semicolon. So right here, instead of a comma, I'm going to add in a semicolon. And now Compass run successfully. Let's open that back up in Chrome. Scroll down and you can see that here we have all four icons appear magically. Let's open up our finder and see how the images look in our sprites folder. In our sprites folder, I have four images, S Dribble, S Facebook, S Skype, and S Twitter. And I named them that way because I wanted to keep them in the same place in the directory because the S stands for social. And in my CSS, I'm referencing the S before I call the interpolation variable. And the sprites are just called automatically. And now if I would add in a class of, for example, LinkedIn, then it would try to look for image called S LinkedIn and it would automatically generate everything else that I need. I don't have an icon for LinkedIn, so I'm just going to remove that. And the final thing we need to do is we need to apply just a little bit of styling for our footer. Now, first we need to style the font. And this is another way that you can style fonts in SAS. Now, what I can do here is I can say family. And the family is going to be the emphasis font, which is Droid Sans. And the style is going to be set to italic. Now, if I save that and go to my compiled CSS file, then here you can see it compiled to font dash family and font dash style. A couple of more adjustments. I'm going to add in a background. So I picked the color of, of the PSD file. And I also have an image called pattern dark and I'm just going to paste it right in here. If we open it up, then you can see here, it's just a simple pattern image and we are going to repeat it horizontally and align it to the bottom. And the height of the image is 88 pixels. And I'm going to subtract that by padding times four. And that's because I'm going to add padding of padding times two just to give the text some breathing space. And I also need to set the color of the text. I'm going to darken the background color of the body by only 5%. And then we also need to set the link color to be a little different. I'm going to set it to be emphasis color. And the final thing we need to do is we need to style the bottom logo. And there we have an ID of bottom logo and the width of it is 185 pixels height is set to 70 pixels and it's going to margin to the top negative padding and it's going to float to the right and we need a sprite image that is called bottom logo save that open up in chrome and reload the page and there we go and let's compare that to our final result. You can see we need to style the buttons and we need to remove the underline from links. So let's do just that. So first I'm going to open up the general and I'm going to remove the text decoration and I'm going to style the buttons here in the general.scss because they're going to be used all over the place. So we have a class of button 
and I'm just going to paste in a bunch of styles. Now, if you have noticed, then right here, the code coloring looks a little bit off. And that's because right here down on the right corner, we have set a syntax of SAS. If I click on this, I can search for SCSS and now the code coloring looks a lot better. Now I need to paste in some more styles and this is very similar to what we did with the other button. We also have a background with a linear gradient. We're saturating the button base color. In this case, the button base color is going to be blue and I'm just going to set the variable in here. So this is the bluish color and just in the same way we need to style the hover and this time we have some slight changes in the styling but otherwise the technique is exactly the same as we had in our previous button. So now that I have pasted all of this in here I'm just going to save this and open it up in Chrome and you can see that this is the complete version and let's compare it to what we have made and reload the page you can see that it looks almost identical except that these buttons are red and that's because I pasted in the wrong color. Now if I go back in here and change this color to the correct one and save the file again and reload the browser you can see that now we have the correct color of our buttons. And now this way I can change this to any color I like. I can even set this to be white and it's still going to try to figure out a button for me and it actually did a pretty good job in a different design this button may work but for now I'm just going to leave it at the blue color that was originally in the design. Now reload this and you can see that we are done. So thank you for watching SAS and Compass for web designers. I really hope that I helped you to learn more about SAS and all the different functionalities and how you can use them. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them at the comments section or you can follow me and tweet to at just Norris. So thank you for watching and I'll see you around.